pleasure to be before you once again today. Really, recently, I watched a video, and it, I think it sums up and explains some things we as Christians have to deal with as we are active in preaching God's Word. And the video went as follows, best that I can recollect, was two friends over at one's house. Let's say a ball game was on the TV, and they're enjoying that, enjoying their snacks and whatever. Well, eventually the time came where one of these friends needed to take the dog out, have the dog do its business. Well, as they opened the door, this friend saw a snake slither across the sidewalk. So they shut the door and went back inside the house. Well, later on, the other friend said supposedly they need to go outside for something. Opened the door, crossed the sidewalk, got bit by that snake. Well, the friend hobbled inside the house. Hey, I just got bit by a snake. Oh, yeah, I knew. I saw it. Well, why didn't you say anything? Well, I didn't want to force my beliefs on you. Can we say that that friend was loving? Can we say that that friend that was trying to walk the dog was having their, their friend's best interest in mind? Well, oftentimes, Christians are accused of forcing their religion onto others. I think that's a false claim. Now, certainly some people can be very forceful in how they speak, which the gospel demands boldness. And there are certainly different denominations who do force their religion on others. I think of cults like Catholicism and, and even their offshoots where they baptize babies. Baby has no idea what that, what's happening. Well, now that baby's going to grow up as if it's a Catholic. Had no choice in the beginning. Now they could certainly have the choice later on and choose, I don't want to be a Catholic anymore and learn better. And there's other religions who would rather kill you before you uh, curse Allah. And if you refuse to convert, then they'll show you the sharp end of a sword. So there are instances where people force religion on others, or at least attempt to. But there's a giant difference between that and how the Christian is to approach studying, studying the Bible with others. There's a reason, though, that we do try to warn people about the snake crossing the sidewalk, slithering across it. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11, we have here, says, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. But we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. Why do we persuade others to obey the gospel? Because we ourselves know the terror of the Lord. We know what awaits others who choose not to be faithful to Him. And that is eternity in hell when this life is over. And anyone who claims to love their fellow man and even themselves ought not want that as a future for anyone. Now, I think there's two passages that show how the opportunity arose to, to convert rulers. This is, certainly, this is obviously Paul in Acts chapter 24. Verse 24, beginning there, says, And after certain days, when Felix came with his wife Drusilla, which was a Jewess, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. So he was at least willing to hear the gospel. And as Paul reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. I don't think anyone could say that Paul was trying to force his religion on Felix. But if anyone ever could, I think it would have been Paul. But he brought up judgment to come. Felix, if you do not repent, you're going to hell. I'm sure Paul would have 
said that a little bit more eloquently, but that's no doubt the message. And then you turn over to Acts chapter 26. Another account with Paul. Verse 27, reading, King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. And Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day were both almost and altogether such as I am, except these bonds. In speech classes, we're always exposed to different types of speeches. Informative, persuasive speaking, or speaking, persuasive speeches. And that's where you try to, you present the material, and you try to win over your audience. I have a certain product I would like to sell, and you need this. So give me your money so you can have this product. Paul is trying to persuade these rulers. He persuaded the Corinthians. And each of these instances, the people involved exercise their God-given free will. None of them were forced to believe something against their will. Just like today, whenever we as Christians present the gospel, we don't force people to obey it. However, we strongly encourage you to obey the gospel, whether it's ultimately being baptized for the mission of your sins or being restored as a faithful member of the church. The best we can do is persuade you. Can't force you. But unfortunately, there are those people who are dishonest. And any time that really what is happening is you preach the truth to them, you ask the right questions, and they don't like it. And those things start grating on their conscience. So they respond with things like, well, I hate you. You're bothering me. Go away or I'll call you again when the season is right. And oftentimes we get labeled as trying to force our religion on others. And those things simply are not true. And they also should never deter us from preaching the, the entire gospel as simple as it is. And as soul saving as it is. So one not. Or never letting. The negative labels of others. Deter us from faithfully discharging our obligations as Christians. But to keep in mind that we do. We must persuade others. To obey the gospel. To be saved just as we are. To warn them of that slithering serpent. Who is indeed out to get them. Because our adversary is roaring as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And he uses enticements. But we know better than that. Not only are we not ignorant of Satan's devices, but we do know the terror of the Lord. And because of that, we persuade others to remove themselves from the current path that they're on. So if you're on the path to hell this afternoon... We typically try to offer the invitation at this time to, for those who would wish to become Christians or those who are members of the Lord's church who are lacking. Be restored at this time or become a Christian. Either of those needs, if they apply to you, please make it known as together we stand and sing.